people have sometimes taken issue with my work and told me they find it depressing. And I, I find that comment depressing and I just want to grab them and tell them, no, it's not. I see my work as being in the a tradition of uh, Catholic staying class, which is very much about the suffering of the saints and transforming personal pain into something more meaningful. The abbot Suget, who was the architect and abbot of Saint-Denis outside of Paris, the uh, cathedral there, he said that stained glass was enlightenment embodied. And the fact that the church really capitalized on it and made, made it's not even a metaphorical experience. It's a primary experience of enlightenment when, when you see those images. There's a lesson that like your suffering isn't for nothing and that if you sort of frame it in this light, you can learn to bear it because we all do have to learn how to cope with suffering. There's something sort of transformative. There's some more value in living through something rather than just avoiding things. I hope that my work creates empathy for the characters that I make and I think anything that makes empathy is positive contribution. What people see in the work is the image and not the design and not the transition. They see depressing signifiers and they don't see any transformation. I wonder if the people who find my work depressing are unable to look at a homeless person when they walk down the street. I mean, well, my trajectory has been strange. I started out as a student I disparaged the idea of technique. I would have been the first to say technique is unimportant, concept is great, craftsmanship is dubious, it's just a bunch of, you know, nonsense. And we're past that now. And I'll tell you, 25 years of experience, I can't uneat that apple. A lot of times when people see it, they imagine that it's painted and it's really mostly engraved. So here's the Bird. This is a bird, even though it looks kind of freaky, like a fish or a flower. And it's here's the two layers of glass, and I have marked it with a magic marker, so I know kind of where I'm going. I'm proud of the fact that I'm a really good technician, and I'm, I'm pleased that I've, you know, if I can say this without sounding too horribly arrogant, but that I've become a virtuoso of sorts. I've just dedicated myself to doing this every day for 25 years. That's what happens. This happens to be a particularly thin layer of glass, so it doesn't take too long to get it off. I don't know why other people haven't thought about filing into it, but I will say I think it's changed the way I express myself, it's informed the way I, I make the work and what I have to say in the work. People haven't thought of stained glass as a medium that is innovatable. I made a conscious decision when I went with a commercial gallery for the first time in 1990 that my work had to be made better because I was secretly embarrassed that my work was made poorly. I, I had a lot of bravado, but it wasn't for real. I think it's embarrassing to be selling things to people that aren't made well, so they're made well. The, the piece, The Cold Genius, uh, derives specifically from the face of the character in the piece, which is a female face that I had drawn separate from the idea months before. That face to me was, was so sublime. I loved it so much. I just couldn't not do it right. So I took the piece apart and made it the same image, only correctly. I had drawn the face and I draw millions of faces. I doodle a lot while I'm on the phone, while I'm uh, in faculty meetings, and uh, mostly I draw faces. So it takes um, a very 
a perfect face to attract me, to make me want to work more. I have to have an emotional attachment to it. All my pieces arise organically from doodles. I doodle the face and then I need to put it in a context and the context includes a body for the face. So I draw a full figure and the, because my work is two-dimensional and not cutouts or sculptural, I need to have a background and it's actually, I'm much more interested in the figures. They, a painting or a stained glass window, any kind of image like that becomes about how the figures fit into the context of the background. So the pieces grow organically from a face to a body to a background and then ultimately, hopefully, to some sort of meaning in someone's imagination. Slow food is an interesting name. Slow food? Food that's cooked slowly? I, I don't think I could be a part of a movement where you had to eat slowly since I enjoy eating so much that I like to do it fast. <laughs> People in stained glass believe there's a right way and other ways, which would be the wrong way. <laughs> and that's what I'm into. <laughs>